All right, a nice, fun, easy step here. Go ahead and grab the AX31036 bumper and the AX31036 bumper pad. <laughs> Again, no numbers on those. Where's my pen? They, uh, there was no dash ones or dash twos on the part numbers. So where's my pen? We can put dash question mark, dash question mark. Okay, and then your AX31088, uh, which is this little metal plate. And you see that it has an indent in it. That indent is going to go inside. So my thumb is on the indent there, and it goes in. Um, there's a groove in the front of the bumper here. Go ahead and put that on, and we're going to use the four screws that are a coarse thread. They almost look like a wood screw rather than a plastic screw. And we're going to put the four screws in. Hold that little puppy on. I imagine somebody will come up with uh, some customized plates for the front of these so that you can uh, have different colors or whatever. All sorts of hop-ups available. They're coming out uh, daily. Every time I look on the internet I see a, a new hop-up for one of the axial vehicles. And that's what makes them so fun. I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but uh, you can go to rccrawler.com. It's just a wonderful forum for anything that has to do with crawling. You can get all your questions answered. You can read up all about uh, whatever's going on, and I seem to have lost a scroll. Here we go. Um, answer questions, read up, talk about different motors, different hop-ups, whatever, for any of the, the different crawlers that are out there. And again, that's rccrawler.com. Now let's mount the buffer on here, and I'll show you why I call it a buffer here in a minute. I'm sure there's a, a proper name for it, but I don't know what it is. Um, it's universal. It doesn't look like it matters which way you put it on and it's going to mount into these two holes right here one and two so we're going to get one of them started and then we will put the other screw in actually since we're there we'll go ahead and screw it all the way in and again I keep harping on this don't over tighten screws because they will strip Go ahead and just put it in until it touches. Then we'll put the second one in. And we'll move on to the next step, which is to install this onto the front suspension module, which we just got done building. Okay, on to the next step. And step number 18, mounting the front bumper to the front module. Pretty simple. There are two screw holes, one here and here. And you'll see on the front of your module that there is a hole that goes all the way through on here. So you're going to slide that on there. And we're going to put one screw into each side of the hole. It's uh, pretty complicated here. Especially trying to do it while achieving porn position for the camera. If I could hold it up to my face, like everybody else, it would probably be easier. But no, we're doing it for you on the camera. There we go. Got it threaded. It's kind of hard to get my hand on the wrench with the A. There we go, just lift it up and the A arm will move out of the way. As long as we're working on this side of the vehicle, just till it touches, we're going to take another 12 millimeter screw and there, this lines up here to this hole in the back. So let's go ahead and screw that in. 
Get it lined up here. There we go. And screw baby screw. There we go. Okay, again, just till it touches. And then we're going to go off camera and put the other two screws in. Um, and earlier I was calling this a buffer, but this is why when you hit something, it actually flexes and it buffers the, the impact. It's like a crumple zone on your car. So we're going to do the uh, other two screws off camera and be right back. Okay, step number 18 is now done. This is what your unit should look like. Okay, off to the next step. All right, let's get started on step number 19, which is building the servo saver. It's not that difficult. Um, first thing I want to do is break in the spring. You don't have to do this, but uh, the best thing is to probably go ahead and do this, is to just exercise the spring a little bit. Um, when you have a brand new spring, sometimes it loses tension a little bit, and if you break it in a little bit with a pair of pliers by squeezing it, it's just generally better. Let's start with the center portion right here. Let's take AX1022-4, which is this unit here, and set it on the directions just as it shows here with the hole being to the left. Then we're going to take the AX31022-2 which is this unit here. Okay, and that is going to set on top of here but not quite right now. Next thing we're going to do is take our spring and drop it into the top of this unit here. There's a just sits right down inside there. And then this unit here is going to go on top. Okay. Now, with this back where it was, we're going to make sure that the arm is pointing in this direction here. And we're going to set this unit down on top so that the holes here line up properly. And we're going to use the two twelve millimeter flathead screws to put in there and tighten it down. Don't over tighten them just till they touch. And I'm keeping these pinched together. You want to make sure as you're tightening it down that the little sleeve fits inside the tube. And we'll go ahead and put the second one in. And tighten it down. Now grab the cross brace, which is AX31025-1, right here, and we are going to set it down, and it's kind of hard to see the orientation here, just like this, and this unit here, which is the AX1022-3, we're going to hold with the arm down and we're going to slide it into the slot here and we're going to use one of these shoulder bolts to tighten it up. Slide that in from the top and tighten her down. 
This is another one that you only want to go till it touches. How do you like that? Okay. Make sure that it swivels freely with no binding. Now we're going to take the servo saver unit that we just built. Make sure that the arms are oriented the way that they are in the directions. Slide this one in and screw it down. The next step I'm going to show you, but it's <laughs> I'm going to call it a temporary step because you'll find that the pieces like to fall out and we're going to be working on this unit a little bit more and they are going to slide out so we're going to show you how to build it up and then uh, usually just take them out and set them aside. We're going to take a couple of the fast eddy bearings which are a 6 by 10 by 3 we're going to press them into the upper and the lower of each one of these two units. Holding my fingers over here so they don't slide out. And then ultimately when we're finished, these two posts will slide in. And that's what the steering pivot's on. That's the steering rack we just built. Okay, so that is the finished steering rack for step number 19.